Broadcast permission for the following program is made possible by the Columbia Broadcasting System. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I have a frightening and moving story for you about a man caught up in a web of suspicion and accused of unprovoked murder. From this beginning, point builds upon point until he is almost overwhelmed with prejudice and hatred, and the life he knew and believed in is distorted and made ugly. Many years ago, Kipling said in a poem that East was East and West was West, and that they would never meet. Our story concerns a similar situation that is very much with us today. Then how do you explain it, Gil? I can't. I saw a gun, Rita. I did see a gun. Okay. But maybe there wasn't any gun, and you only thought he was aiming at you. It was dark. I'll leave the explanations for my defense lawyer. You're going to be tried? Oh, but they couldn't. Yeah, yeah, but they can, Rita. A black cop kills a white kid. How does that sound? Our mystery drama, With Malice Aforethought, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars Carlos Carrasco. When Sergeant Gilmore Roby climbed into the unmarked car assigned to the narco squad that night, he had nothing on his mind that troubled him. All the way out to the bust, he sat quietly in the car. Oh, of course, there was danger. There always was during a bust. But after nearly ten years on the force and a hundred incidents a year, danger became routine. You knew it was there. You were prepared. You did your job. After all this time, you tried not to get up a sweat. You just couldn't and do your job right. And Gil Roby tried to do his best every time. That's what was expected of him. That's what he was paid for. And then it happened. The thing he had always kept hidden in the back of his mind. Gil? Yeah? You see anything? No. Nothing's moving. Just been talking to the captain. He says they're in there. They're working in there. Windows look dark. No lights. No, painted over, probably. Smoke coming out the chimney. Smell it? Yeah. There's no mistaking that smell. Wood fire. That's right. Nothing suspicious. Looks like a peaceful old suburban house. What's the plan? On a signal. The usual. He'll blink his flash three times. You take the back door, I'm taking the front. They'll cover us and keep the sides under control. You're taking the front door, Kip? Yeah. Captain assign it that way? No, I did. All he said was you and Roby take the front door and the back. The front is the tougher spot. Why you? Front or back? You gonna give me an argument? They're both lousy. Look, Kip, I don't... Now, shut up. That's a signal. Get moving. Now, wait till you hear me. Then move in like gangbusters. Police! You are surrounded! Come out with your hands behind your neck! Stop! Stop! Gil! Gil, are you all right? Oh. Oh, good. There you are. Now we got everything all tied up in front. We bagged them all. Uh, not all. Take a look. Yeah, you got him. Right through the head. Come in. Come in, Sergeant. Sit down. Thanks, Chief. That's your report in your hand? I just typed it up. Signed it yet? I thought you might want to read it first, Captain. Here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Hmm. Everything okay? Uh, Gil, don't sign this yet. Why? 
Who's the lawyer for the police welfare organization now? A Hendrickson. You know that, sir. Yeah, I thought he'd retired. Well, before you sign any statement, better talk it over with Pete Hendrickson. I don't get it, Chief. The kid was dead on arrival. It isn't good. <sighs> yeah, I know. Look, in ten years as a cop, I never killed a man before. The kid had a pistol pointed right at me. He saw me in the light from the doorway when he came out. I yelled at him to stop. I saw his gun turn in my direction, and then I... He didn't put up his hands after you called to him and identified yourself as a police officer? No, not then. But he put up his hands? After I shot him. His hands went flying up. Then he just crumpled forward into the high grass. About the gun, you're sure you saw him point a gun at you? As big as a cannon. Gil, I'm going to have to ask you for your badge and your gun. I'm being suspended? Yeah, Gil. I don't get it. A suspected pusher pulls a gun on me. I defend myself by shooting him. That's the big question, Gil. The dead kid didn't have a gun on him. But he did. He did. The whole area was cordoned off and searched. They went over it with a fine-tooth comb. No gun. No gun. Is that you, honey? Uh, yeah, Rita. You're later than usual tonight. <laughs> Poker game at the precinct house. Rita, please go back to bed. Go to bed? Are you crazy? I'm starving. The doctor said my appetite would improve when I got into my fifth month. <laughs> he wasn't even beginning to state the facts. I'm collapsing. What's the matter, Gil? Rita... I killed a man tonight. <gasps> oh, Gil. Oh, Gil, honey. Oh, my darling. Oh, my... And I'm in real trouble. Trouble? What do you mean, trouble? You didn't just go out and knock somebody off for kicks. It was duty, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, at least that's what I thought. That's the way it started. I don't get you. What are you talking about? Take a look at the paper. I just picked it up at the newsstand. First edition. Trigger happy cop. Dead kid. Oh, what? It's a damn scandal, sheep. What do they mean, kid? Nineteen, Rita. He was just a kid. Well, he's nineteen. Lots of young kids are rotten, stealing, crooked, pushing dope. What did he do? As far as we know, he didn't do anything. No record, nothing on him. He was suspected of being a pusher, but there was nothing on him to prove it. Nothing on him but a gun. I know you, Gil. You wouldn't take a pot shot at a man without some kind of, um... Provocation? Yeah, provocation. He must have pulled a gun on you. They say he didn't. Who says? I... I saw a gun in his hand, pointed at me. But it was never found. Well, they didn't look hard enough. They looked all right. Then somebody hid it or, or took it away or... No, no. Police were there. No one got near the place until it had been completely gone over. Then how do you explain it? I can't. I saw a gun. Okay. So maybe there wasn't any, and, and you thought he was aiming at you, and it was dark. I'll leave that he... defense for my lawyer. Lawyer? You're going to be tried? I don't know. But they, but they couldn't yeah, kill me. Yeah, they can. A black cop kills a white kid. How does that sound, Rita? <laughs> The way you keep asking me that over and over again it makes me think you don't believe me. Now, just a minute, Ruby. I'm your lawyer. And I want to do the best job I can for you. But if you keep fighting me... I told you the way it happened. He was coming out the door with that gun pointed at me. Still hanging on to that, huh? That's the truth. Don't you want the truth? Sure, sure, but... No uh... buts. That's the truth. And it just dissolved into thin air. Huh? I don't know. I don't know. Look, you know there was a gun, and I believe you, but do you think a jury is going to believe you? Jury? Well, I thought you said... The th DA spoke to me this afternoon in my office. He's going after an indictment. He's not happy about it. Nobody's happy about it. But the papers are talking about a cover-up. If they don't make a big try to punish you, the whole political machine at City Hall will be in hot water. They'll little blow off. So... 
I'm going to have to take the wrap to keep the lid on. I wouldn't put it quite that way. Well, what other way is there? You did knock off that kid. Yeah, yeah, that's all I've heard over and over again. A lot of hate mail coming in on you, and it isn't all from whites. Well, what can I do? Stop trying to fight this thing and start listening to people who know more about the law and public opinion than you do. Meaning you? Yeah, me, the commissioner, the mayor, the DA. Uh, go on. I'm going to put in a plea of, uh, well, to put it in layman terms, we're going to say that, uh, that you've been ill lately, suffering from severe headaches, that you've been fed a lot of racist propaganda. We'll bring in psychiatrists, psychologists. Uh, no, no. I won't stand for that. You want to cop a plea? Insanity, right? Going to say I was crazy with hate when I shot the white kid. And not exactly. You're going to drag racism into it, making it object lesson. Listen to me, Roby. Sergeant Roby. Sergeant Gilmore Roby to you, Mr. Watson. Okay, Sergeant Gilmore Roby. What do you want to do? I'll tell you what I don't want to do. I don't want to play the black and white game. Sure. I'm black, and I know it, but I'm not anti-white. I'm not bitter, I'm not aggressive, I don't carry it around like a sword. I'm a man, a citizen, I pay my taxes, I do my job, I try to do it well. I don't hate anybody. Well, it seems that we have wasted one hour and 45 minutes of my time. Wasted? You won't cooperate. You will not listen to anyone. Well, you're trying to put words and ideas into my head, into my mouth, that are completely false. I'm sure you won't have too much trouble finding a new lawyer. You're walking out? Uh, you're letting me out. My secretary will prepare a letter which you will sign, releasing me. Good day, Sergeant. Who are you calling, Gil? I'm trying to reach Kip. It's about the fifth time I've tried to reach him. I guess he's not in. Well, he's married, isn't he? Isn't she ever home? I don't know. You met his wife, Rita. Oh, yeah. Doris, isn't it? Once on that boat ride picnic two years ago. Mmm, she was very nice. You, too, had a long talk. Yeah, and that was the end of it. There was a lot said about the four of us getting together, but it never happened. Oh, now, darn it, Rita. What are you trying to say? Look, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? We're not her kind, and she politely let us know it. Look, I don't worry about her. Kip and I are friends, good friends. We've pulled each other out of many a tight spot. If I can count on anyone in this, well, this rotten business I find myself in, I can count on Kip. Well, where is he? Has he called you? Well, he's just busy or something. Well, you're in one of those tight spots now. It's time for Kip and the U.S. Marines to land. <laughs> it's the outside buzzer. It's someone downstairs. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, Gil, it's me. Kip, buzz me in. Ah, sure, Kip. Well, Rita, what have you got to say now? <laughs> the Marines have landed and have the situation well in hand. I'll be in the bedroom, darling, so you two buddies can have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Hiya, Gil. Oh, Kip, am I glad to see you. Right. Come on in, come on. Want a beer or coffee? No, I just had lunch. Well, sit. Sit. No, no, I can only stay a minute, Gil. I got to be on duty in 45 minutes, uh, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. How quickly you forget when you ain't punching the clock. I've been trying to reach you all week. Yeah, I got your messages at the bureau. Called your apartment several times, too. Yeah, my wife told me you called. Yeah? Uh, Gil, I shouldn't be here, see? I was told I wasn't to see you or speak to you. Why the hell not? Because I'm going to be a witness on the other side. Ah. <sighs> Kip, not you. Look, I said no to the D.A. when he called me in and questioned me. It was all about the gun. Did I see it in the kid's hand? I said, no, I didn't. It was the truth, Gil. I... I had to tell the truth. Yeah? I said I didn't want to get on the stand against you. He said he was going to call me up anyway, and I'd have to testify. I... I can't do you any harm, Gil. I mean, by testifying. No. No more than has been done already. 
Well, anyway, I went out to the place, the site of the trouble. I went out on my own. I spent three hours going over all the area. Nothing? Nothing. Not even a water pistol. Look, Gil, if you say there was a gun in his hand, I believe you. I've never known you to take an easy way out of anything. I, I, I've never known you to lie. But... But you could be mistaken. Just believe me when I say that I'll do my very best for you. One by one, the pieces are falling into place. What once had seemed like a few small stones now had grown into a great high wall, shutting out the sun. It seemed they were trying to take everything away from him. His job, his future, his friends. Gil wondered where it would end. I'll be back shortly. Three days of silence passed. Gil was so depressed, he didn't leave the apartment. A reader brought him the newspapers, which did very little to alleviate the gloom. Then a call came from his superior officer, the head of his division. He was to meet him on a street corner. Sergeant! Sergeant Roby! Ah, uh, yes, Captain. Get in, Roby. This is a no park and no standard zone. Want me to get a ticket? <laughs> no, sir. Just drive through the park, Harry. Sergeant Roby and I are having a little conference. Did I keep you waiting long? No, sir. Let's drop the formality, Gil. Ah, sure. The reason I wanted to talk to you this way is... Well, it wouldn't look right. You're coming to my office while the grand jury is mulling over your case. How was it in front of the grand jury? Rough? I was as nervous as a cat. Well, if the grand jury votes to indict, you're in for the fight of your life. If you lose, it'll mean your job, pension rights, the works. It might even mean a jail sentence if you get a bad break with the jury. Oh, it's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. I'm so down. I wish I could just quit and, and run away from it. Don't ever dream of quitting or running. They'd have nailed you to the door. Now, you've got to have a good defense. Who, who's your lawyer? I understand you're letting Watson go. He's already gone. Just stayed with me through the grand jury hearing. Good. I never did like that political hack. You've got to get a good lawyer, an honest guy, not a shyster playing all the angles. <laughs> Do you know of one? Remember, I'm just a cop, living on a cop's salary. I can't pay a big fee. Oh, the PWO will help you with that. Let me worry. About me? About you, about every other man under me. I'm responsible to them, and for them. And this whole business has thrown a gray cloud over our entire department. Gil, not only was a man killed in that raid, the raid was a washout. A washout, Every but... man picked up has been released. Lack of evidence. But they all had records. Narcotics. Yeah, but we found nothing. The house been searched? Taken apart board by board. Oh, incidentally, the mother of the kid you shot is suing the city and you. That's all I need. You know, if we'd found the place loaded with heroin, this would all sound very different in the papers. Even your business would be treated as regulation police work. You see, you can't afford to fail. Gil, if you do, they're waiting to flatten you. Well, they've certainly been after me. Where can I drop you? The next bus station. And thanks for everything. Especially wanting to see me. Well, cheer up. We'll beat him yet. I hope. I'll get it. Hello? What? Oh, how can you... Oh, you dirty rat... Who was that, Rita? It's it's nothing, Gil. It's nobody. It's just some nut. We we shouldn't let these things bother us. Oh, but they do, honey. They do. I've gotten a couple too. They sink in deep and burn. That's funny. I thought I was the only one getting them. Uh, two yesterday when you were out shopping. Well, can't we change our number? Or get a an unlisted one. 
just like the celebrities? Well, in a way, we are kind of like celebrities. Our name is in the paper, on the TV news, or the radio. Yeah, except that I suspect most of them like that kind of attention. Well, I don't. Oh, Gil. All those nasty racial remarks and threats. <laughs> you know what this last one said? He said my baby wouldn't be born alive. Oh, Rita, Rita. <laughs> to pay for the life of the white kid you killed. Oh, good <laughs> Lord. Why can't they leave you alone, at least? Get hold of yourself, Rita, baby. Someone at the door. Hi, Gil. Kip, come in. Come in. What brings you here? I thought you and I were not supposed to be seeing each other for a while. Uh, special police business. Captain is worried about you and your wife's safety, so he's put a 24-hour-a-day guard on the house. Oh, it's not any too soon, Kip. Ah, uh, hi, you, Rita. We're getting a lot of uh, frightening crank calls. Ah, you want the department to put a tap on your phone? It won't do much good. Never the same crank twice. Yeah, you just gotta let it roll off your back. Don't let it get to you. That's what I've been saying. Anyway, my visit is official, not social. Just to let you know that you've got protection. Here, come here. Look out the window. You see that guy with the long hair and the straggly beard? <laughs> Dirty blue jeans and open shirt? Right. That's Rinaldi. No. <laughs> Gino Rinaldi. Yeah. The best dressed man on the force. A great disguise. He hates it. Next shift, you'll have Herman Goldberg, and I'll be on the midnight to 8 a.m. I requested it. I figured if there was going to be any nonsense, it would occur then. Ah, oh, Kip, it's good to know you'll be around. Oh, it takes a load off my mind. Uh, thank the captain for this. I bet it was your idea. Maybe. I don't remember. It is kind of strange that nothing was found that night. It might still be there. Well, they got the police pretty well hanging on the ropes. No place was searched the way that was. But in my spare time, I'm going to keep an eye on it anyway. Yeah. They might just be waiting for everything to die down. All the noise and publicity... And then go back and get it. Maybe. Well, I'm going to run now. Keep your chin up. Something good will happen. Bye, Rita. Hey, how long now? <laughs> a million years. Oh. No, three and a half months. But it feels like a million years. No time at all. You'll do it standing on your hands. And remember, I'm putting in my bid for Godfather. I'm first. Huh? Well, we'll <laughs> take the matter under advisement, Sergeant Kipnis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gil? Gil? Wake up, the phone. Oh, what? What? It's the phone, Gil. Can't you hear it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What time is it? Uh, 2.10. You think it's one of those crank calls? Oh, God. I hope they're not starting them at night now. Well, there's one way to find out. I'm coming, I'm coming. Calling at this hour. Hello? Sergeant Gilmore Roby? Speaking. Sorry to disturb you at this hour, Sergeant. What do you want? I want to help you. What is this, some kind of joke? This a crank call? Well, just forget it. You've had your fun. Some darn fool waking us up at this hour of the night. Okay, go on. Let's have it. I'm afraid there's some misunderstanding, Sergeant Roby. I'm serious when I say I want to help you. Yeah? And you are definitely in need of a friend. Well, go on. Let's hear what you have to say. I can't say it over the phone, Sergeant, for obvious reasons. Well, the phone is not tapped if that's your obvious reasons. I'm happy to know that. But I still would prefer a face-to-face -face meeting. Why? One can speak more openly, more to the point. Suppose I won't bite. As a matter of fact, I haven't even smelled the bait yet. Fifty thousand in small bills. That sound tempting? That's the bait, huh? What's the hook? I'm prepared to discuss that in complete detail. When? In 30 minutes. But it's almost three in the morning. I... Look, before I rush into you anything... You are on the hook right now, Sergeant. It's my intention to get you off of it. How? Meet me. In 30 minutes, at the corner of Quentin Street and 4th. I think you know the neighborhood. I walked that beat for two years. Then you know there's a public phone on the corner. A 
southeast corner. Yeah? You will receive further instructions in a call to you on that phone. You are not to tell anyone where you're going. You will be watched. Agreed? Agreed. 30 minutes. Take a cab. 30 minutes. What's going on, Gil? I'm going out, Rita. Out? To meet a guy. I don't get it. At this hour? Who? No time to explain. What? Now, look. Kip is on duty guarding this house. Get to him. Tell him that I am going to be at Quentin and Fourth in about 29 minutes from now. Tell him to follow and be careful. I'll leave a message for him in the telephone booth on the southeast corner. <laughs> Taxi! Taxi! Quentin and Fourth, driver. Keep the change. I'm a little early. Hello? Hello? You are more than prompt, Sergeant Roby. Now, here are your instructions. Take a cab to West 49th Street. 959 West 49th. I'll be waiting for you there. Have you got it? 959 West 49th. Are you writing? Yeah, yeah, so I won't forget. Forget? How could you possibly forget that simple number? I might get it reversed or something. After all, I, I am kind of nervous. Oh. I can find a taxi. Yes, that, that might be a problem. I'll give you an extra ten minutes. Gotcha. <laughs> yes, that might be a problem. Wait till Kip picks this one up. You might have the problem, mister. There. Uh, stuck right on the glass. He can't miss this. Hey, taxi! Taxi! Boy, I'm in luck. Driver, I want to go to... Step in, Sergeant. We're both going to the same address. Let me take you there. You? You're the guy who... I'm your caller, Sergeant Roby. Come in, come in. That's better. But I thought... I anticipated what you thought, Sergeant Gilmore Roby, and also what you might think. I'm afraid your message left in the phone booth will lead someone on a wild goose chase. Then we're not going to... 959 West 49th. Wouldn't think of it. Don't like the neighborhood, especially at night. It was just to prove to you that you couldn't outsmart me. Coming, just a minute. Oh, for goodness sake, Gil, get your finger off the bell, will you? Did you forget your key? Kip! Why? Where's Gil? Rita, can I come in? Sure. What's the matter, Kip? Where's Gil? I don't know. I went to the phone booth at uh, Quentin and Fourth, and just as I got there, I saw Gil hail a cab and get in. I went into the booth and found his message for me stuck on the glass. All it said was 959 West 49th Street. Well, that must have been the address he got over the phone. Right. So I called headquarters and alerted them. Told them to send a couple of cars to that address and cover the area. I commandeered a private car and the guy drove me there. I was there in less than ten minutes after I got Gill's message. Place was surrounded. And? Well, 959 West 49th is an empty lot. The building was torn down over a year ago. But I don't follow you. Why would Gil give you the wrong address? Because he what? didn't know it was a phony. We've been outfoxed. The burning question in the back of Kip's mind is, why? What was the intention, the purpose of the unknown caller? What was wanted of his friend? If he had fears for Gil's safety... He didn't let Rita know them. On the surface, he maintained a calm, composed manner. Underneath, his mind was racing to discover the motive. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. After leaving Gill's apartment... 
Kip went directly to headquarters and spilled out all he knew to the captain. When he had finished, he looked up to see his superior's face crimson with anger. It was the first time he had seen this usually mild-mannered man lose his temper. I'm holding you responsible, Kipnis. What are we, a one-man operation here? What right do you have to go now, off... please, 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 sir, may I explain? I've heard your explanation. You took off on your own and messed up the... I didn't have time to ask for help. Gil had... Uh, Sergeant Roby got this call from an unknown source. He told his wife to get to me with the info that he was going to Quentin and Forth to a telephone booth on the southeast corner. There he must have received a call that directed him to 959 West 49th. Now, he left me that information stuck to the window of the booth. That's where you went wrong. If you'd called in for help immediately. Well, as soon as I got his message in the telephone booth, I... I said immediately. When Mrs. Roby gave you the first information, we could have had the area under surveillance before Roby even got there. Yes, sir. You say you saw the cab pulling away. Anyone else in the cab besides Roby? Well, I can't be sure. It was dark out. I thought at the time, however, that there was more than one man in the passenger seats. This is all going to look very bad. For Sergeant Roby, sir? Yeah, for him, for us, too. The grand jury voted to indict. There's a warrant out for his arrest. Uh We were supposed to pick him up today. This will compound matters, make him a fugitive. What do we do now? I got a pickup call out for Roby. If he can be found. Uh, I'm worried about him. So am I. Look... Isn't it possible, sir, that this is all kind of a smoke screen to block out the the real objective? What objective? Well, we didn't get anything in that raid. Except trouble. That's right, sir. But we did know that that cute little suburban house with the white picket fence and the rose bushes was the distribution center for most of the heroin in this part of the country. That's right. We've been watching it for weeks. Well, what happened to it all? We couldn't find even a used glassine bag. Go on. I believe it's still there. Where, Sergeant? Where? Yeah. The question is, where? After the going over we gave that place, what's left to search? I'm going along in your hunch, Kipnis. That's your assignment from now on. The house. Okay. What about Sergeant Roby? Well, he's my first consideration. I'm working on that myself. I don't get it. You say you want to help me? What's in it for you? Isn't there an old saying about looking a gift horse in the mouth? Don't question it. Fifty big ones and a private plane to take me over the border. Brazil, Sergeant. The United States and Brazil have no extradition treaty. They couldn't get you back to stand trial. I I still don't see what you have to gain by all this generosity. We want you out, alive or dead. We need the excitement and furor your disappearance will cause. I see. Which do you prefer? Huh. Well, that's an easy question. What do you want me to do? Get your wife on the phone. You are to tell her this. Are you sure you're going to be all right, Rita? Well, I'd feel better if we knew where Gil was. This waiting. Waiting is driving me crazy. I didn't sleep last night. Now, look, I'm sending Doris over to stay with you. You shouldn't be alone at a time like this. Oh. I, uh, I gotta run, No, Rita. wait, wait. Maybe it's, maybe it's about Gil. Hello? Rita? Oh, Gil, honey, where are you? I can't tell you. But can't tell what? I don't know myself. Now, what? listen carefully to what I'm going to say. Gil, I've been so worried about you. I... Rita, listen to me. This is important. Please listen carefully. And don't do anything foolish. Don't talk to the police. Don't talk to anybody. My life is in danger. Oh, Gil. What I'm going to tell you must be kept secret. What? I said you must keep it secret. Oh. Tonight, at 7, you will be called and told to go to a phone booth. Where? I don't know. You will be told at 7. At 7? Right. Now, you might be called even earlier. So pack a small bag and keep it by the door. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it right by the door. Trust me, baby. I'm doing the right thing. Don't ask questions. And keep a stiff upper lip. Bye, honey. Goodbye, Gil. Kip. He was telling me to get you in on this. He kept saying Kip instead of keep. Oh, smart guy. Yeah. He's on to something. Now, watch what happens when the boys get cracking on this one. Rita, hand me the phone. Kip! 
Uh, just be calm, Rita. Answer the phone. We'll be listening. Keep him on as long as possible. We may be able to trace it. Pick up the phone. Hello? This is the call you've been expecting, Mrs. Roby. What? Oh, um... C could you speak louder? I can't hear you. Listen what? carefully. I won't repeat. Leave the lights on in your apartment. Take your suitcase. You will not be coming back. Go to 20th and 3rd. There is a phone booth there. Wait, uh, okay. Uh, could you repeat that? No, I, I will not repeat. Have you got that, or shall I ring off? No, I've got it. I... Be there in 20 minutes. Wait there for a call. Wait, wait, I... <sighs> He's hung up. We recorded the call, Rita, but we didn't have enough time to trace it. Technician thinks it was from a public phone. Oh, what, what do I do now? Just as he says, go to 23rd Street and... 20th? And third, Kip. Oh, good girl, Rita. You're calmer than I am. <laughs> now, look. There's a taxi waiting to pick you up, driven by a cop, so you won't feel deserted. The order has gone out to a special squad who already have the information. They'll be all around when you get there. As soon as you get the directions over the phone, pass them along to a cop who will identify himself. Rita, good luck. to take the tape off my eyes. Relax, will you? When we get where we're going. The airfield? My wife's going to be there. Is that what you've been told? Yes. So, she'll be there. Where's the man I... Where's your boss? Who do you mean? Well, the man who arranged all this. Why do you want to know? Why? Well, why? Well, he owes me $50,000. That's a good reason. Fifty G's. That's a lot of bread, mister. What for? I, uh... Well, what does it matter to you? Is he going to be at the airport? How should I know? He don't tell me his business. We are going to a flying field, aren't we? That's what they told you. Brazil, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Must be some mistake. Mistake? I didn't have no orders to go to no flying field. What? orders did you have? Yeah, yeah. I better tell you about that. It's time. Okay, Sergeant Roby. This is it. Get out. Are we there? You are. Oh, uh, pardon me. I forgot to introduce myself. You know me. You've probably seen my pictures in the paper. I'm the brother of the kid you knocked off. What? What? The boss gave me a bonus. He said I could have you. This is for my brother. Oh. There's a body on the ground. It's Gil. Oh, Lord, he's been shot. Hey, give me a hand with him, will you? We've got to get him to a hospital. Come in. Oh, Kip, come in, come in. Well, how's the patient? Uh, hiya, Kip. Hey, is that you under all those bandages? Uh, he was a lousy shot. Second try hit me in the chest. He was aiming at the head. Well, you sure had me worried when we picked you up. I don't get it at all. How did you know where to find me? A tip. An anonymous tip. And guess who Mr. Anonymous was? That guy who kidnapped me? Right. Emil Dorcas, a biggie in the dope business. Diversionary tactics to send us off on something while the big job was being done. You're kidnapping. The business with Rita. The big job. The dope. It was there all the time. In the well. See? We never thought of that. The phony well in the back? Yeah, that cute little phony well behind that cute little suburban house, behind that cute little white picket fence. Over two million dollars worth of white powder poison at the bottom of it. Ah. <sighs> And we took that house apart, board by board. 
It was right out there, almost in plain sight. Yeah, but you see, they couldn't come and get it. I was hanging around, and when I wasn't there, I got Phil Markham to watch. They had to get you away. Right. That's why they made the big bid to you. Oh, I suppose they wanted to get you for shooting Rick Kranzer, but that... Uh, Rick was... Kranzer's big brother nearly got me. And we got him. We got them all. And I heard one of them is turning state's evidence. Um, there's, there's something missing. The police were alerted on the tip about me running away. How did they know that the dope was being picked up? The lady next door. Simple as that. Bless her heart. A terrible snoop. I spoke to her and asked her about neighbors. She told me that they were very suspicious, and she knew they were no good from the day they moved in there. So I agreed with her and told her to watch, as if I needed to tell her that. <laughs> I gave her a special number to call. Everything was ready and waiting. And that was that. Ah, there's just one thing that's bothering me, Kip. That charge against me. I'll have to face the judge as soon as I'm able to get out of here. The charges have been dropped, Gil. Dropped? Why? How? That gun you saw? Yeah. Well, you really saw it. Remember you said that he pointed the gun at you and when you fired, his hands were flung up in the air? Well, that's right. Okay. The pistol went flying and dropped right in the well. They found it when they got the dope. Ballistic says you were a very lucky guy. That gun had been fired, but the bullet was a dud. It didn't go off. Oh, Gil! Oh, that really had me worried. I knew I saw that gun. Mm -hmm. So the indictment has been squashed, and you are now a member in good standing of the old club. Kip, I don't know how to thank you for all you've done. I do. Kip, the new addition to our family, when he comes, is going to be called Gilmore Kipness Roby. Do you like that? Oh, it's super. <laughs> but, uh, suppose he's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it'll just be Kippy. <laughs> Long time ago, Kipling wrote, East is east and west is west, and never the twain shall meet till earth and sky stand presently at God's great judgment seat. Well, perhaps times have changed since that poem was written. Perhaps today we all can like and understand one another despite the difference in creed, color, and birth. Gil Roby and his very good friend Kip had found that possible. I'll be back in a moment. Perhaps our poet anticipated the understanding between people of different beliefs and colors because he ends his poem, but there is neither color nor creed nor birth when two strong men stand face to face, though they come from the ends of the earth. Our cast included Carlos Carrasco, William Redfield, Marion Seldes, Len Gotchman, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It's not a fire. Could you please tell me where you're calling from? I'm in a phone booth on the expressway. For Pete's sake, will you tell me what you're doing in my house? Uh, let me speak to my wife. I'm sorry, Mr. Farmer, you can't do that. Maybe, maybe it would be best if you came back home. I'm not doing anything until you tell me what happened there. There was a, a little trouble. I mean, a lot of trouble. I want to know what kind. You'd better just come back here, Mr. Farmer. Your wife and kid were, were hurt very bad. Oh, Lord. Connie. Susie. How bad? What's going on, for Pete's sake? I want to know what happened. I want to know how they were hurt. And how badly. I hate to tell you, Mr. Farmer. I mean, just like this over the phone. Damn you! Tell me! They're dead. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>
The preceding program was broadcast with the permission of the Columbia Broadcasting System.